Uh, that's what my understanding. Uh, no, I better not touch in that. <laughs> uh, and then in combined electric and magnetic responses, we um, may create this uh, concept of meta or meta materials, and that's uh, one of the first, or if not the first paper, which uh, was performed at microwave frequencies when you see a combination of double ring and uh, rods allows you to actually control magnetic and, res and electric response. Of course, because that was a microwave, uh, many people working on antenna theory, they said big deal at microwaves, we all know that electromagnetic field has two components, electric and magnetic, but in optics, that was really a revolutionary approach because it allows you uh, to actually have a magnetic control magnetic response at very high frequencies when you, you, materials do not actually have any magnetic um, magnetic response. Metamaterials became very active topic, was a lot of exciting. Oh, interesting. That was definitely not me. <laughs> a lot of excitement. Um, with metamaterials because uh, we actually presented an interesting concept like negative uh, refraction with a lot of excitement. Uh, and then it was a uh, few years ago, it was OP and Optics Photonics News uh, issue devoted to some anniversary of uh, discovery of metamaterials. And you see uh, Sir John Pendry, who was a visiting fellow here at the Institute of Advanced Studies, and then different ideas, <clears throat> including the uh, invisibility clock was also very hyped by media. Uh, initial idea was to actually use metamaterials to engineer optical and or electric and magnetic responses, engineer fundamental constant mu and epsilon, and somehow apply homogenization to structures. We basically don't pay any attention how this response is created from resonators, but trying to introduce effective parameters. It's uh, in the upper uh, right corner, you see that structure, metal dielectric uh, uh, structure, which was very, very popular in the, uh, uh, with many demonstrations. Basically, people try to describe uh, response of the structure through average parameters because wavelength of light uh, was always much larger than period. However, um, soon after that, people realized that resonances actually play an important role. Here in this homog homogenation approach, resonances were somehow neglected or hidden, but resonances becomes very, very important. And this is especially seen clearly when you switch from metals to dielectrics. Dielectrics did not appear first as important materials because it was no free electrons. It was no plasmonic environment to create sub wavelength structures. So, but later dielectric appeared as a uh, materials which allows actually low loss realization. Resonances in both plasmonic and dielectric structures are summarized, summarized in this chart. You see now we present everything together. Plasmonics, of course, we start with surface uh, plasmon polyritons. Surface plasmons were very important. We associated with uh, this hybrid electron and electromagnetic waves. Uh, but in their counterpart for the electrics, it's uh, modes which supported by the sphere uh, and we support me resonances. Um, of course, if you look at the lattices, there are many common things, such things like lattice modes, uh, appears which we're discussing with people discussing plasmonic for a long time. Of course, they also appear in electric structures and such modes like bound state in the continuum, Bix, which people first discuss for dielectric structures, also exist for uh, for for plasmonics, which uh, not everybody realizes up to now. So me theory actually it's a very long, very long uh, uh, approach. Uh, based on exact solution of me, uh, you can solve uh, Maxwell equation exactly for sphere and plane wave and, you know, 1908. And believe or not, these are figures from original paper of me. 
you see it was no computers no mathematica but still people provided the great results even by hand handwriting and uh, for physicists the most important of of course not these crocodiles and formulas which uh, now these days you can easily handle with mathematica but some dimensionless parameter which actually ratio between the geometric size of sphere uh, and wavelength of light if you look at the different relations between um, these uh, parameters you can actually realize immediately why me theory is so important because it describes many many interesting effects including geometric scattering the Rayleigh scattering but we are interested in resonances what kind of resonances so imagine you have a sphere wave come and penetrate inside it's not metal it's dielectric so wavelength of light it actually modified inside become lambda over n where n is refractive index now with lambda over n uh, wavelength of light in the medium will become comparable with geometric size we will have a typical geometric resonance and this is shown actually in the pictures of uh, uh, okay of uh, of me so that was uh, sitting for more than 100 years there which is uh, this graphs so why is this resonance so important now if i look at the response of a sphere made of silicon you see that uh, interesting graph for scattering cross-section with two peaks if i look now uh, this, what correspond to these two peaks the first largest peak correspond actually magnetic dipole resonance shown below and second resonance is actually electric dipole resonance so sphere support both electric and magnetic resonances and very simple the electric sphere can be used as a building block to create all these metamaterials which people we are struggling to actually fabricate and excite. So you see that uh, magnetic response comes here. It's not magnetic material. So it comes from optically induced magnetic modes. And uh, what is interesting that uh, actually the sphere is relatively large because for silicon and uh, visible wavelength, you need to have sphere of several hundred nanometers. And this means that such a large sphere, unlike a plasmonic system, it supports higher order mode or higher order multipoles. Imagine the sphere is a single source. It generates different multipoles, it generates coherently. This multipoles start to interact. So first things in direction, of course, interference. We become multipolar interferences and so-called Kerker effect, which allows you to create unidirectional scattering. Of course, the field penetrates inside. This is not uh, metal, it's dielectric. So all nonlinear effects are expected to be enhanced at the magnetic dipole resonance. And uh, of course, people know that this me spheres are low Q resonators. Low Q means that it's a Q of food of 10. People in subway flame photonics were not interested in such low resonators because plasmonics may provide um, this values so or even better values and with much more confined field but a few years ago we actually discovered that these resonators made of dielectrics can have a very high q factors uh, due to the fact of a possibility to excite bound state in a continuum i am not sure general audience know about bound state in a continuum because it was a kind of not a textbook type of notion but i just come from uh, these historical remarks in the 1929 you see a lot of history in that in 1929 i mean uh, um, pioneers of quantum mechanics for neumann and uh, ug wigner we published very strange paper you know it's uh, not as strange as a paper of parcel in one page it was a few pages but still that's a very strange paper when we solve uh, Schrodinger equation for a strange potential, varying and decaying potential, and found the exact solution. Even the title is about strange blah, 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 right? Verdurgic means strange, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The title is about yeah, yeah. strange. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but paper itself is strange. As I said, not as strange as parcel, because parcel is just half a page. Everybody cited it's just half a page of his review. Uh, but this also, I, 
I, I, I believe we got it like a surprise because we found exact solution and we discovered that that exact solution sit in the continuum spectrum. Not reproducing their results, it was this special papers which try to explain what we found later on. But I just give you a very simple cartoon. This is from classical textbook of quantum mechanics. We know that the potential, we have a localized state which corresponds to discrete eigenvalue, and we have a propagating state. This is electron wave function, well, very well known uh, problem. And of course, there is discrete level. Everybody knows that in one dimensional potential, always there is a discrete level for any shallow potential. Now imagine that I will modify the potential. I will vanify potential to approach this problem which we consider it. So it's now varying but decaying potential. Now we have three zones here. We have upper one, which is the usual propagating modes corresponding to continuum spectrum. Below one, of course, standard eigenvalues corresponding to discrete spectrum. But in between, in this new zone, you see that there are peaks and wave function actually tunnels for this maxima. And when it tunnels, it gets reflected and transmitted, reflected and transmitted. And solution which we found actually correspond to the condition of full compensation of reflected and transmitted function. You can arrange it and build this very nice fully localized modes, which will be sitting exactly in a continuum. Uh, when, you, when you try to convince people that that may be useful, we could come on, this is exists for very special conditions. This is mathematical curiosity. It's probably nobody interested in that. But in reality, we don't need the solution. We are interested in mechanism, how to approach the solution. And this exact solution, of course, is fully localized. It's Q factor is infinity, and it's just very, very singular point. But we are interested in mechanism to actually approach the solution and get waves localized without any mirrors. You know, in lasers, mirrors are important. We trap light in the cavities. But here we don't have cavities. We just, we're just working with the uh, open resonators. Okay, that's actually concept. And how this concept, of course, is always in... Someone suggested it um, not very useful, but only in 2011 was a few efforts to actually uh, reproduce these solutions in a completely different environment, a discrete array of resonate uh, of wave guides. You see discrete arrays has two defect. So we can get light localized in this defect. Of course, it may be leaked to the array. And uh, this will be type of modes which will be localized with leaky edges. But because of two defects, we can actually compensate leakage from both these resonators or defect waveguides and get waves localized. Of course, we can use the age for that, but it was like a fun because the uh, platform of discrete waveguides was introduced for some time. People were playing with uh, solid state type physics problems and was not very interesting. But then photonic crystal field came and people discovered that in photonic crystals, particularly in membranes, membranes, uh, dielectric structures with holes, these states appear very naturally. And it was a nature paper, 2013, when people actually measured uh, these states. And this is a state which actually correspond to standing wave. Just to understand it, this is the example. So we have a slab with holes and it supports a standing wave because uh, radiation from both ages up and down, it compensates each other. If you look at the cross section, this will be somehow potential of uh, uh, von, von Neumann and Wigner, localized states with two leaky modes and it will compensate each other and this will be standing waves. It, this standing wave sits in the continuum spectrum. Uh, curiously enough that people knew the states for many, many years. We knew them dark states, we knew states which decouple from continuum, and we operated with that language, but not many people actually associate, even Satsumi Noda, who predicted one of the highest Q for photonic crystal membrane, um, that uh, as far as I, uh, I understand, only his postdoc um, <clears throat> explained him <laughs> that what he observed is actually bound state in the continuum. Anyway, we go ahead, but interesting, that there are different mechanisms to achieve the states. 
And one of the mechanisms which is very useful if we consider associated with so-called strong coupling. Again, strong coupling, very well known, but here because of uh, strong uh, overlap of two dispersion curves, there is a repulsive <clears throat> interaction. And this repulsive interaction usually associated with the creating of the dark state. And this dark state is nothing but bound state in a continuum. That was described in the paper of 1985, another German scientist, Friedrich and Wigner, uh, like a bound state in a continuum for interfering resonances. And this situation is actually very often uh, it appears in different applications. Uh, how often? So I just uh, give you what we discovered some time ago. Let's take an open resonator. Again, no mirrors, just resonator, cylindrical, made of high-index material. Why do we need high-index material? Remember, lambda over n, we need to squeeze slight inside of material and get a resonance. That's why we need relatively large lambda, because if we start from uh, wavelength in air, we need to actually get it to material sizes if you want to have it at optical wavelength. But funny enough that if I take the cylinder and will play with the height, then what I will see is that I will see two types of resonator, resonances. One is a similar to whispering gallery mode, but low modes are just me modes. And the second type is Fabry Perot because I increase the cylinder. And if I show everything on a uh, parametric place, uh, par parameter place, aspect ratio, and size parameter, you see that all these mods, which can be classified like T, T, M, whatever uh, we, we, we want, but we still remember their origin. Part of them have origin from me type resonances, and the other part has origin from Fabry Perora resonances. For that, height of the resonator should be at least quarter of wavelength. And you see that crossing point actually correspond uh, to appearance of this bound state in the continuum. That was a, a theory paper some years ago with my colleagues from ITMO University. And um, we came to that idea absolutely incidentally because we, we were working on different problem. We, we were trying to actually describe how transformation of uh, periodicity or uh, refractive index allows you to move from photonic crystals to metamaterials. In the experiment, we just decided to measure scattering from one single rod. It was a rod in microwaves. It was a, uh, a glass tube filled with water. Water has a very large epsilon, uh, about 70. And if you hit water, you change epsilon between 70 and 90. So it was perfectly tunable optical devices of a macroscopic scale. And we discovered that measurements from one day to another day completely different. And the reason was that students who was measuring them, you pull water at different levels. <laughs> so lower or higher, and the scattering diagram was completely different. So actually, student was crossing that point of measuring up and down. It was a big, big discovery for us. But in reality, it has a very interesting physical consequences. Of course, what is happening there? When I increase height of the resonators, they actually uh, excite second, uh, second um, magnetic dipole type resonances, and I have hybridization of two modes. So basically, these two modes, after hybridization, they suppress dipole radiation and they support high order radiation. One of the modes actually associated with the very high Q values. This is what we call quasi-bound state in the continuum, because of course, in the mathematical bound state continuum, Q should be going to infinity, but it's of course not the case because uh, for example, epsilon of material finite, by hybridization allows you to realize this physical mechanism predicted um, for Neumann and Wigner. This is again, I just repeat it again for a very, very simple situation. Imagine that we have resonator. And then what kind of mode we have? It's always leaky mode because we don't have walls. We don't have mirrors. So this is leaky mode, which has a maximum in between and then leaky and from the other side. But now I achieve situation when I have two such leaky modes. If I have two leaky modes, I can play with uh, radiation outside and compensate it and get mode localized. Of course, the question is how well I can do it. 
I can do it actually experimentally very well in microwaves. So Q factors 12,050, and you see all this peak corresponds to this crossing point <clears throat> when you cross these two types of mode, but you can do you can go to near infrared and near infrared. Uh, this is um, aluminum gallium arsenide disc uh, on the substrate. Uh, and you see that Q factor here measure it is uh, 200. People who know nanophotonics and subwavelength optics, we immediately can realize that Q factor 200, it's a lot. It's actually a very big value for such small scales and localization of light for, with Q factor 200 allows you to achieve many interesting effects. Um, but it's not all. There are many discoveries we can have. If you remember that one slab, and in the slab I mentioned that uh, bound state in the continuum require destructive interference, like exactly I have at the edge of brilliant zone uh, when periodicity produce break scattering. But it's also it's known if interference interference happen, it has it may it may be destructive or constructive. In the case when interference is constructive, it actually may enhance radiation and lead to so-called super scattering. So in reality, this means that. For, to, for create quasi-bound state in the continuum, you have kind of opposite type of dipoles. So we suppress dipole radiation through interference. For But in near this case, when you have a bound state in the continuum, you enhance radiation, but by changing phase condition between these excited dipoles. And this means that actually in the case when you have uh, conditions for dark state or bound state in the continuum, we should see dramatically enhanced radiation, not at that point, but nearby. That was actually the scattering shown by this uh, color diagram and was verified experimentally. And this is a general condition of almost any physical system where uh, conditions of bound state in the continuum are realized. Okay, I move ahead and even more interesting things. If you look at the formulas of me, from 1908, formulas of me, theoretical formulas, we don't specify parameters. But everybody understands that formulas of me applied for the case when you have a sphere made of high index materials placed in open space. But it's not true because if formulas theoretical, you can reverse parameters. And very simple, you can, of course, I mentioned, you can use silicon and actually see what will happen. Of course, silicon has losses, losses particular for <clears throat> uh, shorter wavelength. And that's uh, how we actually see modes from this uh, me resonator. But formulas actually valid for reverse case. So we can have a sphere of low index, you can place it in the high index materials. So this is called me void. And me voids also described by me formulas from 1908. But if you now put a real, of course, this modes, very similar to modes of uh, usual solid resonator. Um, but if you now put a real materials uh, like silicon, you see that Q factor is higher where losses are non-zero. So losses help somehow to trap light in air. Um, Attraction this, uh, of this concept is that you can you can trap light in the air through this excitation of these modes and go to extreme UV light when you can't actually get another type of, um, of trapping mechanism. A question is how to realize this. Of course, it's a formulas we can't do actually uh, easily because uh, to, the, to, to create uh, new voids, you need something like Swiss cheese, some voids inside of hard material. And this is not the case. We don't know about optical Swiss cheese. But in reality, it works when you open one side. So you basically drill by EBL, we drill holes of finite size. And these holes, cavities, support perfectly modes sitting inside, provided you satisfied all the conditions. And of course, you can say, oh, this is kind of photonic crystals. But no, no, this is completely different because photonic crystal have hole through the um, uh, through the membrane, but here is a hole of finite depth and very, very important. That was also discovered accidentally. It's a lot of accidental discoveries here. 
Now collaborator Mario Hengel from Stuttgart Group. He's fabrication guy working with Harald Gissen. And he was uh, uh, testing equipment, ABL machine, and was drilling holes of different size and depth. And suddenly, after he produced holes, he saw that very nice picture. And this very nice picture tells you that there are modes of particular frequencies which are supported by these holes. And of course, it depends very much on parameters. Because you can do analysis, you see that very, very similar to these uh, cavities inside of solid uh, materials. And we support different types of mode and uh, each mode can be associated with colors. And that was the idea to create some, uh, to use these modes for structural colors. That's um, uh, picture of Kandinsky in the Stuttgart Art Gallery. And um, uh, we reproduce a part of that picture. As you see that it's a relatively simple approach, which can be reproduced by many groups, but colors as uh, good as uh, uh, being produced by different methods. So this uh, B concept is very useful when we try to create properties of resonators, but um, uh, I, I believe more interesting properties associated with the possibility to achieve a high Q in this uh, resonator and uh, go to nonlinear non -linear effect. Uh, what we know about nonlinearities? Of course, many people try to develop nonlinear subwavelength photonics or <clears throat> nanophotonics, but because everything was based on metals, efficiencies of uh, generation of uh, nonlinear effect with metals was relatively low. You see, I improve a bit numbers, now 10 minus 7, <laughs> um, as, uh, as was recently demonstrated. But if you switch from metals to dielectrics, uh, of course, we, we immediately have much higher numbers. And even 10 minus 4, this is conversion efficiencies. Uh, remember, this everything subwave length, no QPM type of condition, this is a um, different type of uh, approach. But uh, if I try to use mods, I can actually achieve mode matching through engineering resonances. What kind of resonances? Magnetic dipole resonances, uh, Fano effect, and uh, Anapola, I don't have time to discuss it, and bound state in the continuum. All of this mechanism allows to increase um, uh, efficiency of harmonic generation very, very substantial. Uh, one of the concepts is based on, on bound state in the continuum, and that was a, a prediction some years ago. Somehow people did not think that bound state in the continuum may be useful in nonlinear optics, but for single resonator, uh, very simple estimates, of course, depending on the type of beam you use, you need the azimuthal beam to excite these modes and to, to provide mode matching, but few predicted 1% of conversion efficiency. You can easily imagine that 10 minus 9 or 10 minus 7 in plasmonics, which people reported in many, many papers, easily beaten by all this 1% conversion efficiency, and we wanted to see it in experiment. Of course, an experiment is extremely, it's everything subwave length. You should understand that it's not a nonlinear, uh, normal nonlinear optics type of effects. Um, we observe second harmonic uh, generation from uh, individual resonators and conversion efficiency was 0 0.1, but still it's enormous. And I mean, record high uh, because of we achieved these conditions of uh, extreme mode localization through excitation of this quasi bound state in the continuum in the individual resonator. What we can do, we can actually try to see high harmonics. This is uh, now a very hot topic. People move from gases to solids and very recently to subwavelength photonics to uh, observe the high harmonics because high harmonics, it's not a typical object for nonlinear optics um, because we, 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 require, we require enormous concentration of energy. Uh, but as you see that if you again go to regime of bound state in the continuum and take a much larger resonator, uh, and we we can see actually uh, generation of high harmonics, five, fifth harmonic and seven harmonic, and the people who are familiar with nonlinear optics, we immediately may, may be surprised because L gas 
material is known like typical quadratic material. It's used for generation of second harmonic. But we saw fifth and seventh harmonic. So the question is what happening? What is the usual symmetries which requires for this um, perturbative nonlinear optics predicted by Blomberger? What happening here? The uh, pumping energies and field localization such that it's actually excite free electrons and excite dramatically. So already no symmetry conditions can be applied. In reality, if you do simulations with two type in, in band and cross band uh, transitions, you see that basically theory predict generation of all harmonics. Uh, the question is why we see uh, fifth and seven because uh, our spectrometers were <laughs> limited. So basically we did not see the entire spectrum. Okay, so you see that even a single resonators can be source of high harmonic, which uh, people did not consider seriously until very, very recently. I switched to metasurfaces. This is a field when uh, some of you, many of you, very well familiar because Professor <clears throat> Sai published many pioneering papers. And some years ago, um, a few years ago, with my collaborators from Singapore, we tried to predict what's happening in this field. And in addition to very traditional topic like meta lenses, people um, use um, uh, to, 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 to use meta surfaces uh, for improving different performances. There are several new directions. So meta surfaces are structures which compose of different resonators and um, we have an enormous uh, number of different ideas and applications, including, for example, biomedical application, sensing and computational, but this basically from microwave for RF type of application. And more recently, quantum metasurfaces is um, one of the images from paper of Dean Pinsai. And you see that sometimes even people do not talk to each other because it's already so wide widely spread. One of the recent um, ideas is uh, to hybridize metasurfaces with uh, two-dimensional materials to get um, um, exciton polaritons and creating active metasurfaces. Um, in general, you may classify metasurfaces by using different approaches. One of the recent one was uh, basically differentiate between local and non-local metasurfaces. Local metasurfaces are metasurfaces which uh, uh, gain functionality from properties of individual resonators, like I discussed before, but you just take an ensemble of these resonators. Non-local, we use a kind of collective modes um, to provide different functionalities. Uh, I have two examples of this, how local metasurfaces can be um, can be um, uh, can be organized and controlled. I changed from usual uh, one material nanoparticles to so-called bionisotropic nanoparticles, either uh, composed with a different shape or composed of two materials. What we know about these nanoparticles, if I take nanoparticles or usual particles in maybe microwaves as well, for example, composed of two materials, and you look at light propagating from right to left, two different materials, green and gray. So what we know is linear optics, there is reciprocity theorems, there is absolutely condition that total scattering should not depend on direction of propagation. And this is shown here by black curve, total, means the total linear scattering, if you ignore actually losses, because losses may be important for different being different for different materials, uh, it's identical, right or left. But because we use two materials, and there is bionisotropic contribution, actually composition, model composition of this uh, scattering is different. If I shine line from left to right, you see that in one case, I have dominating magnetic dipole, in another case, I have dominating electric dipole. So this is a property of a single resonator. Now I take the single resonator and create a, create a metasurface. What I can do, I can see that nonlinearity breaks this symmetry. In nonlinearity, you can actually achieve condition when from one direction, like forward, 
you have much stronger field harmonic generation because it's driven by magnetic dipole. In another case, when I uh, shine line from different side, um, this uh, field harmonic generation is very weak because it's driven by electric dipole, does not support very strong generation of field harmonic. An experiment that was uh, uh, by uh, binary type of structures that composed of silicon, silicon nitride. We use only four different types of pillars for simplicity. It's not optimized. And we try to do kind of uh, asymmetric nonlinear holograms, uh, kind of nonlinear Janus effect. Uh, this is a result from experiment fabricated metasurfaces. And you see that depending on where you shine line uh, from forward or backward direction, in the field harmonic images, you see different type of uh, structures and, uh, and different type of holographic images. But again, I uh, repeat that we use only four types of uh, four types of uh, of this um, binary pillars. Uh, you can do different things now. People are using uh, phase changing materials like GST or VO two in order to uh, create active metasurfaces. Uh, here we can take a silicon uh, resonators place on VO two layer. Again, we in that same case we engineer um, uh, uh, engineer the interaction of this individual resonators with the substrate. Um, and depending on which phase VO2 is, metallic or um, insulator phase, we can see different type of response. And our idea was to actually drive this transition all optically. So basically, when we shine light and increase power of light, what we can see is that VO2 becomes very strong in linear optical material. And um, um, we, in, we engineer magnetoelectric coupling with the substrate, and we can actually achieve non-reciprocity conditions for the type of metasurfaces. These metasurfaces, yes, exactly this, as I mentioned, silicon resonators on VO2 substrate. Experimental results showing, you see this very huge high stresses depending where shine line from left to right on these metasurfaces. And uh, uh, as we engineer it, functionality comes from a single unit, from single resonators. And of course, this is uh, relatively low powers and uh, CW lasers, which um, uh, can be employed for, for, for realizing of this non-reciprocity. Um, I just come back to this idea of local and non-local metasurfaces. Local, as I mentioned, engineering of resonances and engineering of multipolar response. But if you use collective response, in collective response, we also can get advantage of bound state in the continuum. This is another type of bound state in the continuum, which uh, also was predicted a few years ago. And it's associated with the symmetry breaking in the plane. So if you have a, a metasurface with the symmetric elements, usually it does not have coupling to normally propagating line or very weak coupling. If I break symmetry of elements in a plane, I allow resonantly couple radiation propagating normally to the modes of the plane and, and achieve very, very sharp uh, resonance in such metasurfaces. Why do we need sharp resonance? Because you can, you can do resonant mirrors or re achieve resonant transmission and employ it to different type of um, functionalities. These are experimentally fabricated metasurfaces. As you see how symmetry is broken, either from notch or stop, or just making different thicknesses of this um, uh, of these bars. So in that sense, we can control actually Q factor and um, uh, use for, the, for different applications. One of the application was to actually apply it for biosensing um, in collaboration with um, my colleague and uh, in Switzerland, we we created meta meta pixelated pixelated metasurface, uh, which is shown above, and we all each uh, square is actually metasurface with slightly different parameters, and uh, this um, uh, big ten by ten metasurface can produce a comp of resonances, and these resonances can be used 
cosensin, basically we can associate um, different materials with the patterns of this um, barcoding uh, of this uh, uh, pixelated metasurface in employee for sensing. And there's uh, different developments of all these um, ideas. Uh, and the um, uh, point here is that, of course, if you use it for pixelated structures, we are not interested to have very, very high Q because all these resonances should have no overlap. If they will be very, very narrow, you need more and more pixels uh, to actually um, improve uh, performance of such type of devices. Okay, I just mentioned uh, that uh, metasurface is extremely important for um, non-perturbative optics or extreme nonlinear optics. Just two examples. It's uh, with my colleague from Itmo University of Russia, is self-action effect. This is with metasurfaces uh, which have Q factor 900 is an example. Uh, first example and second example is uh, generation up to 11 harmonic from uh, silicon metasurfaces. But I should admit here we did not actually um, check what happened to what an even harmonic, so it still requires more insight. Finally, I come to very last section about chiral effect and metasurfaces can be also employed for engineering enhancement chiral response. Chirality is extremely important feature. It's very important for different type of chemical or biological application and was a dream of many people who create artificial structures to enhance chirality because chiral response is usually very weak of all natural materials and they wanted to actually create chiral structures which would enhance chiral response for different type of application, including biochemical and sensing application. Quick, uh, this chirality is known to produce optical activity and also circular dichroism. And the field of plasmonic was very successful in demonstrated enhanced chiral effect because you create a kind of spiral which will be consistent with the um, pitch of the circular polarized light. And you try to actually excite surface plasmon polyritons of the structures where all metallic to enhance um, chiral response of all the structures, but you see they are really relatively bulky. And when meta materials uh, appeared, meta concept appeared, people try to use almost both electric and magnetic response to enhance um, chiral effects. You see different type of example structures for different years. Uh, in the upper one shows split resonators, which are multi-layered structures with different rotation. People try to see how chiral response is actually engineered by changing orientation of the splitter and resonator. However, recently we noticed that bound state in a continuum concept allows you actually to achieve so-called maximum chirality. This maximum chirality associated with so-called chiral bound state in a continuum so what is this? Imagine that we have a left or right polarized light. We have a metasurface as shown here. And uh, we engineer metasurface as a way that right polarization transmit resonantly exactly on the bound state in a continuum condition. And left polarization either absorbed or completely reflected. That can be satisfied in the resonant condition provided we actually achieve this interesting conditions of um, uh, very sharp resonances through symmetry breaking in a plane. But in order to uh, uh, apply it to chirality, you need, you need the simple, simplest example which we have here is a two, um, two bars which are not only provide symmetry breaking in the plane, but we also shift it to have, actually have a um, symmetry breaking in the third dimension. And that was uh, our first theoretical paper, which actually demonstrated that we can actually achieve chiral bound state in the continuum, which will realize almost 100% uh, chirality difference or maximum chirality effect, which was uh, not even attempted in the past. How to realize that? Of course, for realization, you need different structures. Soon after our paper, was different ideas. You see that uh, idea comes from Stanford. 
that from Andrea Lu group from New York and this from another Chinese group. So you see that people try to break this um, out of plane symmetry in different ways, proposing different type of structures. But in reality, things became much, much simpler. Why we became, became much simpler? You know, in order to have metasurface, when you hear term planar optics, you should, uh, you should understand that not literary, but with some restrictions. Uh, metasurface will not be functional if it will be very, very thin. In order to have metasurface functional, you need at least quarter of wavelength because optics requires some phase shift. A phase shift can't be achieved for very, very thin metasurfaces. So your structure made of dielectric is a form of quarter wavelength, it's relatively thick. So we can think that we can break symmetry already on that, uh, on that, um, on that depth of metasurfaces. Um, uh, these are examples of experimental, I just switch it off. And because it's thick, what you can do, you can start designing your metasurface uh, from these tilted resonators, and they're just relatively too thick, they're not very thin, to resonators, to get resonators, you need to break symmetry. And then in order to achieve chiral response, we just tilt them, like shown here, you see? Uh, and then if you tilt them, you basically, what you do from mathematical point, you start from so-called gamma point is a, um, for normally propagating light, a singular point corresponding to uh, this usual periodic structure. Then you break symmetry going from usual big to quasi big, um, tilting them in a plane, you split gamma point to two C points, and then by tilted, each of the resonators, you actually shift this C point in such a way that to get one C point exactly corresponding to position of former gamma point. This is for people who understand photonic crystal philosophy, but it's basically explain how to achieve a perfectly chiral response at normal propagation, employing the thickness of the structure. That was fabricated by my colleagues from Shenzhen, from Harbin Institute of Technology, uh, which is fabricated the slanted, slanted geometry by inclining metasurface and implying uh, this usual approach. And then we added uh, gain materials and demonstrated simultaneously um, chiral PL, a chiral lasing that was uh, published at the end of uh, last year in science. Uh, very recent, very similar development, even simpler one, uh, but so far theoretical, comes from the idea to break symmetry vertically. You employ two materials. This is a, a, a few review collaboration with Yan Chen, former postdoc of uh, Chen Guichi in Singapore. So you see that two materials, you actually, again, break symmetry uh, vertically, and it, it shows absolutely perfect uh, chiral response. And that can be realized not only for slab, can be realized only for a lattice of resonators. Of course, if I add substrate, substrate will introduce additional magnetoelectric coupling, it will destroy this nice picture. Uh, in any case, I come to the end. What I wanted to say, I wanted to say that, first of all, field of metamaterial is still alive, but they're very often at getting a new name. And new name shows new functionalities and new possibilities. We call meta optics and meta photonics. Why? Because initially, main demonstration of metamaterials were from microwaves, uh, where magnetic response is somehow expected because all radars actually employ magnetic response. But in optics, it's less uh, expected. But now we can actually employ these ideas of metamaterials for optical applications where magnetic response is not that uh, usual. So photonics, because we already have quantum realization of many effects for single and entangled photons. And in many of the problem, we need to pay attention to resonances. I specifically do not mention that bound state and the continuum solve all problems. You should be careful because, because there are different aspects which I didn't mention, like critical coupling effect, which resonance, because it's all based on mode matching. So uh, lattice resonances may be important. The mirror resonances may be important. Now it's a way actually to look uh, uh, back to plasmonic problems and uh, actually try to 
understand if plasmonic, uh, plasmonic system support the strong resonances uh, with very high Q, which was absolutely unexpected a few years ago. And finally, I just mentioned that one of the recent realization is demonstration of chiral beaks, which would allow to achieve very strong um, chirality-based functionality, such as chiral sensing. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank uh, Professor Kipshia's uh, wonderful talk. Now it's open for the question. Yes, please, Professor Zen. Uh, thank you. Thanks for the very nice uh, discussions. You, one part I am quite curious about uh, VO2, the light-induced uh, phase transition. Uh, you said a phase transition triggered by the light. What do you mean? Is a, fat, is a structure phase transition or the metal insulated transition? Can you do that? Metal insulated transition. Oh, yes. it's the metal yeah, insulated yeah. transition. Is because it reversible? Laser transition? heated? Yeah, yeah. But, it's reversible, but has a high stresses type of things. Yeah, yeah. Reversible, uh, yeah. It's it's uh, you 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 invert. Uh, let me see. You use laser to trigger the transition from I power. Uh, okay. And I decrease power. But how that uh, to do with the surface uh, uh, plasma or surface uh, uh, photonic things? It's of just course. laser heating. Yeah, it's a good good question. You can do it in a slab. Okay. You can you can take a very thin slab and do it. Why do we need metasurface? Right, because it enhances dramatically this effect by orders of magnitude. Why? Because each resonator has modes. Okay. Modes are driven by resonances, and when I hit by laser, so the response is much much higher than it would be exactly the same for thin layer. Of oh. course, it would be the same for thin layer because it's the same effect heating and cooling. For, but resonators actually enhance dramatically by creating oh, this oh, hot okay. spots. Hot spots. Okay, now I understand. I and it's, learn uh, more from it's you. orders of magnitude higher. That's mm -hmm. and of course high stresses is larger, you know. But it's based on this uh, cooling, cooling heating type of effect. Of course, I, I fully understand. We need to come with some functionality. To <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good uh, idea. Different so. patterns changing, whatever. But we did not succeed. That you know, yeah. But we did not try because yeah, okay. limited resources. <laughs> right. Thanks. I will learn more from you later. Thank you. Any uh, further comment or question? Yeah, Professor Lei. Uh, thank you, Yuri, for the excellent talk. So I have a short question regarding the quality factors. So you introduced the mean resonance of, uh, say, nanospheres, right? Silicon nanospheres, right? You also introduced a new type of uh, resonance produced by mean voids, right? So uh, from the mean void structure, it seems that the fields are confined in air, right? Yeah, yeah. So laterally, if fields are confined in air, air has much less loss than silicon, yeah. right? And dispersion and losses, yeah. this is important things, yeah. Yeah, but uh, if I uh, recall the scatter spectrum, uh, produced by uh, uh, so the, the that's the main question yeah, why we publish in light because people ask me ask us yeah, can so you show is, scattering there's no scattering spectrum that's the problem because but, but see some broad spectrums no broad there's spectrum. no that spectrum like from single resonators it's a, it's a, it's a very difficult difficult story because it's a lot of background radiation which does not show and q factor is still small you know you don't see that very sharp peaks, you know. Yeah, that's my question. <laughs> yeah, no, it's that's okay. question of referee who kills this paper in nature. <laughs> uh, and he still did, we know who is that, and <laughs> finally, uh, but uh, no, no. It's, because uh, my, my group has been working on single particle measurements for many years. So for such a single hole on a continuous film like silicon, right? I don't see much difficulty in doing a measurement. So What's the... Let's discuss it. Yeah. Let's discuss yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, yeah. cheers. Yeah. Uh, the other question is regarding the uh, bond staging continuum. Okay, uh, I know that there are many, many exciting works here. So uh, can you comment on the essential difference between your bond staging continuum as a previous studied final resonance? Okay, yeah. first of all... Uh, you are also an expert on final resonance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. First of all, I if you notice, I did not mention final resonance. Because after some thinking, I realized that it's a completely wrong terminology. 
because there is no Fano resonance. There is a Fano effect. Fano effect show you a symmetric scattering curve from something. It's caused by different type of, usually it's come from interference of narrow line and broader line, but how this line produce? We don't explain. So it's not resonance by itself. By resonance, what we understand is kind of you know, like me, like Fabri Perot. It's a resonance. It show you kind of resonant condition when two lengths coincide, whatever. But Fano does not predict anything. So it's it's this terminology comes. I I I know that I call it Fano resonance many many times. You know, but probably it's not true because it comes from discrete problem of which was Fano solving for atomic physics. In atomic physics, it was really resonate, resonance because it was a, a single element which was produced resonance and he applied it for, for very specific problem. And I believe it was uh, it was a mistake for to actually re move it to optics and call everything Fano resonance. So Fano resonance is a, this asymmetric curve usually up and down, and it exactly corresponds to this interference phenomenon. And it's very similar formulation like for bound state in the continuum. Exactly, if you look at Fano formula, bound state in the continuum appears as a limit when so-called Q parameter in Fano formula goes to zero. And it's a collapse when line becomes symmetric. When line becomes symmetric, this is exactly quasi bound state in the continuum. This is all connected. And of course, it's physical formulation is almost identical, but it's almost identical as soon as you don't go to limit of Q infinity, whatever, but finite Q, that's all, all similar, you know. But I in, intentionally did not mention it. And you see, my picture does not have Fano because every single, you can get Fano effect from lattice, from single resonator, from plasmonic, from me, from everything you can, you can have for Fano. First. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You every single generation can produce uh, a structure can produce Fano. That's why I prefer to call Fano effect because when we call Fano resonance, we actually don't explain where it comes from. But it may come from different. It may be lattice mode which resonate with the defect or me. Even from single me, you can also have a Fano effect because you can have two different multipoles with a different uh, spectra. Thank you. Yeah, gosh. Yeah. So uh, you, I know you know I am more on the material side. Yeah, I'm not a physicist, so I will ask you a little bit more materials oriented question. Uh, sitting in your opinion, so uh, you you showed this analogy. It's not an analogy, but you showed a Swiss cheese, right? At one point of your slides, yeah. And you know was... how to do it, yeah. So maybe I know, <laughs> maybe I know it, yeah. But so that's my okay. question. I mean, okay. do 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 you feel materials people could realize somehow this? No, 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 no. no. Even if you make the cheese semi-transparent somehow and put. That might be interesting. Yeah, I don't know. We so maybe this is a way, right? Yeah. If if you if you make the structure of a, okay, okay, no, a this way I can and, uh, keep it semi-transparent, right? And then yeah. holes are air. Then no, may, no, maybe, I yeah, I may, 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 maybe it's possible. We didn't, huh? Maybe I, yeah, we right. didn't. We, we came, as I said, accidentally from different side. Right, right. From this um, mm -hmm. open, 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 mm -hmm. open, open. Uh, but should void. these voids be? Uh, very well oriented, like it's an array of voids, or they can be random in this. No, no, they can be random because they don't talk to each other. Ah, yeah, okay, okay. And unlike me, resonators, which actually has a decaying field, so it's individual voids. We actually, they actually individual. I see, I see. There, there are many possibilities. For example, if they individual, mm -hmm. you can put a layer of two D material, very thin layer, mm -hmm. and this layer will combine them, mm -hmm. and you control coupling. Mm -hmm. Of, of this uh, modes of this thin layer. So, mm. but I, I think because it's published only this year, you know, I think many group will follow oh, yeah. <laughs> because uh, mm. it's, uh, you need to think about possibilities. Yeah, right, but... right. And my other question is about your lazing with chiral, chiral lazing. Yeah, achieving chiral lazing, uh, you say it is possible with support of metasurfaces, right? So people demonstrate it already, right? Yeah. Uh, but then, uh, uh, let's say other 
people try to realize chiral lazing with chiral nanostructures just because they are chiral, right? Like uh, chiral molecules yeah, yeah, yeah. or chiral nanostructures, right? Yeah. So how much these fields differ from one to each other? Do you, do you have some opinion? I mean, I, I can say I just make a, like what, what we did with, uh, or we tried to do it with Dongyuan, right? So we just make chiral, whatever, chiral perovskite nanostructure. Uh, this nanostructure emits light because it is made out of perovskite, so we make it lace, right? There is nothing about metacephas in that case, right? And you tell us uh, people go for metacephas, and this will help us to make lazing. How uh, different are these two situations? In no, in, in our case, of course, lazing was a mean to demonstrate that, that we have a really chiral response, and we have uh, uh, very well control um uh, separation of left and right polarization but of course with comparison I, I don't know it's this by the way this structure in terms of chirality is not a perfect structure mm -hmm. um uh but it's good for lazing because if you if you sit for a specific mode it just but I think your structure is uh, periodic right yeah you need yeah. periodicity here right in uh, the case yes, yes. in because, the case you need periodicity, because it's right? based on bound state right right so yeah. here um, periodicity is yeah. Periodicity is a must, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. My, my understanding is that what uh, we have published with Qing Hai Song, the gain medium itself is not chiral. Okay. The gain medium is not. Gain medium is anyone. No, yeah, medium, just the light emitting no. stuff. Medium right? is not chiral, no. Chiral. Right. Yeah, correct, correct. 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 Uh, what we are doing now, the, our materials itself, they are chiral. And light emitting. Yeah. And light emitting, right? Yeah. Chiral and light emitting, right? Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right. Thank that's you. also possible to engineer with metasurfaces because you can engineer chiral field localization oh, thank you professor uh, uh, in quantum mechanics uh, there's a, a solution for the power state in the continuum BIC so can you find a similar uh, solution analytically for in optics very good question we did not think about that <laughs> because usually it's optics is not one dimensional. <laughs> but so it, you mean to copy exactly what they found. We did not think about this. So, Probably it's possible if you create kind of effective potential because equation in some limit, uh, if you go to scalar wave approximation, um, paraxial approximation from scalar wave equation it will be exactly like um uh, uh like a uh, schrodinger equation then you can try to map it but the question is what for <laughs> okay uh, so when it comes to pic is is there some fundamental difference between the pic in the weak eye system and there in the listeners between pic and pic in weak eye uh, system and wave guide system yeah yeah and the pic in the lesson they just different type of uh, pic they're not the single type there are different types there are basically there are many different types of bsc because and if you you may take multi-layered structure with an isotropic layer and then you will find uh, it's people studied that and they know that there are dark modes there dark modes are bsc because we decouple from radiation so it's not a model driven, it's a fundamental wave phenomena. So there are different systems which may support this type of effect. Okay, thank you. So at least at least I can think of four major type of base. I've shown you only two. This uh, based on slap and the strong coupling. At least the uh, four major types of bound state in the continuum. But I, I believe there are more, and we basically uh, based on the idea that you can base uh, localize lo mode can be separated from from radiation but we coexist below light line we coexist with uh, above light line not below light line with radiation uh you mean uh time boom means bic so what about the uh, flat band about flat band a uh, flat band yes yes it's also very related you can you can go to flat bands, but we need more resonators, so not from single resonator. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay.
Uh, we always has a limited time. So any last question? If no further question, let's thank our Professor Yuri Kuxia for his wonderful excellent. Thank talk. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for all of you. So now we uh, conclude this uh, talk today. Thank you.